please have your seats and welcome. Wow. Sometimes people who introduce others, you wonder if they were paid. <laughs> You're very welcome. So good to see everyone. Wonderful friends here, pastors of other churches, pastors from Worship Harvest, and uh, yeah, apostles, reverends, priests, priests and kings. Could we have that back line of lights on as well so we can, because we'll be mostly operating from here as we talk. As you can see, the people of Worship of St. Hebe have been going through, putting in a lot of work. <laughs> so we want to congratulate Pastor Sam and Pastor Anne for reducing the dust around their church. I know that the pastors of Worship of St. Gayaza are saying they will be there. Even the ones of Makere. Why are you standing, you guys? So thank, congratulations and thanks for the hard work uh, to sort of get this place nicely set up. Please, please have your seat up. Is this an Anglican church? Someone put on the lights and then they switch them off, so I don't know what's going on. There is like uncoordinated foot movement. Not those ones. You can keep those ones on as well. The ones up. I hope everyone has had at least a cup of tea and something to drink. No one here knows where the switch for the lights are. Uh, are we one of those churches where only the senior pastor knows where the switch is? Ah, you see, it's actually the overseer. <laughs> the overseer of the senior pastor who knows where the switch is. Even the senior pastor does it. <laughs> what a shock. He's shocked that the lights work. Senior pastor, can you kindly move for me this podium down here? Wow, thank you. And I want also in a special way to appreciate Pastor Dr. Okulo and Pastor Angela Okulo, who are the overseers of, of the churches in this region. Thank you. They've worked so hard to make sure we get some paving, bathrooms. I remember, please sit down as I talk about it. I don't know. If actually, standing is good for your health. Those of you who work with a laptop and you're seated there the whole day, if you don't get standing breaks, it's not a good thing. So, maybe this is your chance. So, thank you. Yeah. Pavers, bathrooms inside, Screen. Some of you are looking and and, wonder, and, and saying, where, where is the image? You know, there is a book we read in primary school about a guy called Abdul. <laughs> well, those who don't see certain things, we are called sinners, but I don't know. That's not so. Yeah. The reason we are here is because we care and love, we care about and love pastors and churches. And typically within our church, we usually have what we call network gatherings in different parts of wherever the church is. So this tomorrow we have a, a network gathering here of the peculiar network. And the people making noise are pastors of Peculiar Network churches. So we made a, 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 a tactical, is it? 
decision that every time we are going to have a network gathering, we should have a pastor's of thousands training so that we get to also enjoy the fellowship with the pastors of other churches from wherever the network gathering will be on the day before the network gathering. Since everyone is coming, setting up things and all of that, we said, why not just, even if two, three people come out, if we can have tea, talk about Jesus and this church and how we can move things forward and then we go home. But it looks like more than two or three people came, which is a wonderful thing. So that's why, yeah, it, it is the way it is. In spite of the timing being so bad, because today is the last day of school for many of us. So picking up children, ETC, and so, yeah, that's why there is a lot of people online instead of in the house. But, so I wanted to explain that we didn't just choose a bad day on, no, we just didn't choose a day that's inconvenient on purpose. It actually hit me this morning that, dude, the day you chose is holiday day, you know, and usually traffic can be interesting on such days. But thank God for the expressway. Is it? Awesome. Uh, last week, last weekend, I was hosted by the pastor of Worship of his United Kingdom. <laughs> for a retreat with her church members and as it is she's in the house so I'm going to ask Pastor Evangeline to stand up uh, and just wave to the people because if I ask her to say something then we have to have an interpreter let's try okay Pastor Evangeline come and say something you come this side why are you harassing her people from Makerere Pastor Ron can interpret. Bring the microphone. You, you know, that reminds me of a joke which I will not tell you about Pastor Ron interpreting. Whatever you want to say. Good you morning, on? everybody. Masu Zemutia. The lamb has won. Omana Wendy Gawang, good day. Please. Um, <laughs> such a privilege to be here in the room. I had to tag along with Apostle, even though he had been in England with us, um, I had to come because he left us in a state. Yeah, Just stay tuned for the news because we received a father, an apostle, a pastor, a shepherd, a prophet, okay. all in one What's person on? yeah, for a whole weekend. Yeah, So it's such an honor to be here in the room. And I'm going to hand this microphone back to the owner. Thank you so much. Papa, bless you. Take your mic. Thank you, Pastor Vanje, for coming. Uh, she, yeah, I mean, she, I think she's almost traveled farthest to come to the meeting. So, anyone from New Zealand or? <laughs> oh, for. I recognize we may have our guests who are attending this for the first time. You're welcome. You may have expected us to be much more serious than this, but trust me, we are, we are, we, we love Jesus. Sometimes we may not look serious, but we take what we do seriously. So I really want to thank you for coming and welcoming. Uh, because we're in the Entebbe area, I know that one of our friends who pastors a wonderful, multi growing and multiplying church here in Entebbe area may uh, really helped us to put this whole event together. And that's none other than Apostle Abbe Collins Bukera. So I'm going to invite him to come and greet us, give us a, a word. Oh yes, you're doing the right thing. This man loves the church. And not just his church, he loves pastors, he loves the church. Several, we honor you. When I grow up, I want to dress like you, but for now, 
I will just okay. pass. I will, I will just I'm, pass. We are learning from you. <laughs> Praise the Lord, pastors. Please sit down. I am. Um, I'm just saying hello to you. Uh, like our pastor normally says that when God is about to take you to the next level, he will always send a man in your life. Apostle, you are that man in our lives. And I know that in Tebe area, we are not going to remain the same again. How many of you are ready to hear from Apostle? I told the pastors that it's about planting churches, growing churches, and multiplying churches. That is all. Be a of your car. Planting churches, growing churches, and multiplying them. That's why we are here. We are so excited, Apostle. Greetings, everyone. Apostle Abbe Collins is my name. I love you. Shalom. Wonders Christian Center. Thank you so much, sir. Awesome. All right. I think let's get into the word. As Apostle has said, we are about... Ah, before we get into the word. Pastors from Entebbe area, you generally think that your church is in Entebbe area. Now, that may exclude people like the Ansubu guys. Because I don't know how Namubiru can be in Entebbe area. But those who are in Entebbe area, can you stand up and we, wel we welcome you into your... Pastors from Entebbe, we want to welcome... We want, we want to welcome you to your own event in a special way. Thank you for coming. That's Entebbe, Kajansi, and other such places. Okay, let's get into the word. So this morning, uh, I spent about six hours on Wednesday working on today's message. Uh, and then this morning, I knew that it wasn't a message. <laughs> yeah. So, whatever is going to come this morning, just know it is the message. Because the other one which I worked on, and my notes are, are here on my iPad. Yeah, and very powerful. But I know it will come out one day. But it's not the message. So, let me start like this. We are about planting, growing, and multiplying churches. Forgive us our screens up there. They will be working tomorrow. <laughs> so if you come tomorrow, you will see how they work. For those of us who have come today, we are using the ones down here. So when they, they put up a scripture, that's where you should look. Yes. <laughs> so there's a scripture from Hebrews 11 about Abraham. Uh, I have a wonderful co-preacher back there that I preach with. When I don't know where the scripture is, she knows where the scripture is. So she's going to put up a scripture in Hebrews 11 about Abraham and how from one man came many what? Nations. Uh-huh. You see? I told you. Hebrews 11, 12. Let's read together. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand, which is by the seashore. Let's read it again. Therefore, from one man, which one man? Abraham. Do you know Abraham's problems? Eh? How he had only one son of promise, plus a few other issues. Therefore, <laughs> From, so you may be and your church has, you're thinking, do I have one member? Where is this going? And there are a few other issues. But God is faithful. That, anyway, let's first read. Because some people, the way they are looking at me like Pastor Isaac, it's as if, let's forget. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, as in Abraham was telling about evangelism. Yeah, he couldn't reproduce himself. But maybe you have won a few souls to the Lord, so you have a, 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 something to start with. Huh? Because 
because you may be here thinking your ministry is not significant when you have a hundred members. Abraham had one member. Yeah, there is hope. Patriarchal International Church of Father Abraham had one member called Isaac and Asha called, okay, there was an assistant pastor called Sarah. <laughs> I had a free running of called Ishmael. Yeah, there was another guy who was trying to join them from another church. <laughs> the free radical was a lot. But this guy had one member. But you, you have more than one member. And don't, don't cut yourself off and say, no, that's about Abraham. For us, we are in the New Testament. This is the New Testament. <laughs> Hebrews. Yeah, the reason I'm saying this is I, I really want you to seriously think about the implications of ministry. Both locally and globally. So he says, from this one man, Mutumoja, Abraham, and him as good as he was a late starter. He got his first member at 100. Hmm? Pastor Isaac Campus, why are you looking at me like that? Didn't he get his first member at 100? <laughs> the encouragement is so high, it is unbelievable. Age 100, when he finally managed to, to win one soul, we are born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. So that's Abraham. We are all children of Abraham. What does it say in Galatians 3.29? Galatians 3.29. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Give us NLT. So by the way, I've started. Because some of you may be thinking, when, you, when are we starting? One, two, we read. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Okay. Romans 4.13. Romans 4.13. For the promise that will be the heir of the world was not Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So the promise that will be the heir of the world, which is, is he would inherit the world. How do you inherit the world? By filling the world with your seed, your children. It wasn't Abraham or to his seed. His seed, we are Abraham's seed. Through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So, Matthew 1 1 is the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, it is so. So, there is, seems to be a thing happening here. Abraham is promised that his children, because it says, out of you, nations. Yeah, there will be what? Nations. That's promised to Abraham. But that promise to Abraham is actually not being fulfilled through the lineage of the Jews. Rather, it is being fulfilled through Christ. Because he said nations shall come out of you. The Jews are not nations. They are a nation. Okay. Are we, are, are we together? Now let me show you another verse because some of you are looking at me with suspicion. Galatians 3.16. Galatians 3.16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say and to seeds as of many, but you are not reading. 
but as of one unto your seed who is Christ. In other words, when he said that you will be the heir of the world, Abraham and his seed, he's talking about Abraham and Christ. And the nations would come out of Abraham and Christ. And that Abraham and Christ would be so blessed that they are, that all the nations of the world would be blessed through them. Are you following? And then Christ. So, you see here, Abraham, Christ, then who? Isaac and Kus. As in, <laughs> like that. So, this thing doesn't end. The whole thing of becoming a multitude doesn't stop with Abraham doesn't stop with Christ and it doesn't stop with you and with me we are all called to continue that lineage of birthing people of faith amen that's why he prophetically says in Isaiah 60, 22, a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation, not just a nation, strong. And says, I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. Are we, are we still together? Okay. I think it's making sense now. So, you, you, and I, I, who are seated here, inside of us are nations. A strong nations. Yeah. And the mistake we make is to say, if I have my 13 members, let the Lord come. No. Come, Lord Jesus, is not the prayer to pray just yet. Because there are 8 billion out there of which you have a portion. And unlike Abraham's system of waiting to give birth by natural means, which has its complications, you and I, our system is different. Supernatural, quick. Can you imagine Satan and his issues? He needs at least legally 18 years to reproduce a sinner with two consenting adults. Who have to wait nine months? Which brings it to 19 years. For two sinners to produce one. That's Satan should and he has no other strategy. Yeah, he he cannot he cannot speed up things. Once in a while he's luck and there are people who get twins. <laughs> and so he's able to produce two sinners at a go. You can laugh about it. No, 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 some of you are looking at me. I think you're thinking, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying, is that it true? Yeah. Did anyone come, apart from Jesus, did anyone else come out of their mother's womb without sin? No. We all came out sinners. So Satan needs 18 years first to reach maturation and then nine months with two consenting adults minus problems <laughs> and complications to produce one sinner. And then after that, after some breastfeeding, it's safe to wait a few months. Then after two years, produce another one. And then produce another one. And then at some point, the bodies get weak. They're like, it's getting too complicated to continue producing sinners. System shut down. I don't know why Pastor Roxy doesn't see that this is funny, but I think it is. I'm describing to you Satan's process of reproduction of sinners, which is human beings. It says, in sin did my mother conceive me. That's David. It's not that his mother was conceiving him out of wedlock. No, it's just a, a 
doctrinal truth. Okay. Now, Jesus, how much time does he need to produce a righteous person? Seconds. You go out there, you do evangelism, and some guys say, uh, some of you even do crusades. So instead of having twins, you are having uh, <laughs> at a go. And of course, what usually is missing is the discipleship. So some of them, you wonder whether they are in Egypt or in the promised land. It's like, or they are in the wilderness. But you find that with discipleship, that sinner, that previous sinner who is now a saint, doesn't need 18 years to reproduce. They need weeks. And they are back on the street, themselves winning others to Christ. And then they are back on the street. I, 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 am I the only one disturbed by this picture? So now, how is it that the guy of 18 years is outpacing the one of weeks to reproduce? Let's talk about reproduction. How can it be that of the 8 billion people on earth, the majority are still in Satan's camp? Who needs that much time to reproduce? When for us who need just, you get saved, filled by the Holy Spirit, off you go to bring more. Get saved, filled by the Holy Spirit, boom, boom, boom. Why, why aren't we eating into the other guy's market share? If this was a, a seminar, I would say, discuss around your tables. <laughs> 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 and send someone to share the findings from the table. But I don't know whether the findings, whether they are shared or not, will help us speed up. I think what will help us speed up is repentance, a change of heart, and a recognition that our system is much more effective than the other system. If we work the system, yeah, which is evangelism, discipleship, church planting. Evangelism, discipleship, church planting. Evangelism, discipleship, church planting. Lead people to Christ, disciple them, send them to, to lead more people to Christ. And church planting can be church, planting churches, which is, I think, the most critical piece. That's why we are talking about multiplying. Or it can also be planting many churches within a church, like cell groups, missional communities. All that is church planting, by the way. You may not think it is church planting, but it is. Because a church is a group of people under a recognized appointed leader who teaches them regularly and leads them on mission, on God's mission, right? A church has three things. Worship, they, if, if they are disconnected from God, it's not a church. It can be a club. So a church has to have a, 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 an up element. Remember our triangle of up in out. So worship, so they have a relationship with God. They pray, they relate with God. Two, teaching, which is discipleship. I know discipleship is a big word, so I'm removing all the big words. So I'm saying, you could even, let me even remove worship because it's also a big word. They're going to say, uh, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Oh, it is it slow song. Or, no, no. Let's say prayer. Uh. Sit Prayer. Is anyone confused about prayer? No. 
Look, even if you sing five songs in a service, you, you will never be as spiritual as a person who goes and prays one hour or two hours and they just come and sing two choruses. It's impossible. You can never be. I used to wonder why Bishop Doug doesn't attend the worship sessions at his church. I'm not saying don't. Because he just comes in as soon as he comes, he sits, they give him the microphone and starts teaching. It's as if he doesn't need the worship session to be spiritual. Because he has already spent three hours in prayer. He's not depending on the worship session to connect him to God. Now, if you, you copy Bishop Doug, but also you, you are like the congregation. <laughs> Maybe we need the worship session. Is this a, a pastor's training? <laughs> Who's pouring water on our thing? We wash them. So... <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that because now there are debates in your heads which shouldn't be there. And some of you may start coming late to your services claiming you don't need the worship. No. You don't need the worship, but God needs it. He wants you to worship him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> when the worship is done and the preacher comes, then he starts his own worship session because he missed the worship. And he wasn't ready. <laughs> okay. This is a good conversation. By the way, pastors, that tough look that you like to put on, eh? reserve it for your members on Sunday. Yeah. Here we are all children of God. Yeah. Even the members, save them from it. It doesn't work. You know, there are people who think that t toughness is a sign of the anointing. No. The Bible says you have, <laughs> you have anointed him with the oil of gladness above his fellows. Yeah. All these pretense we put on so that we, that we look like we are carrying the whole... No. The Holy Spirit is happy. The anointing is the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy. You can end that joy. <clears throat> In that list, I can guarantee you there is one you will not find. Seriousness. <laughs> Holy Ghost is a serious ghost. No. Where were we before we were distracted by the tough looking people? Prayer, Prayer. that's up. Those who know the triangle, up in out. Prayer, teaching, and evangelism or soul winning, mission. I feel like any group of people under a recognized appointed leader, this part appointed was a strong part of my message which I prepared on Wednesday, which I will not teach you today. I'd speak a bit more to a point. Pastor Blesso, I'm going to speak a bit. You know, no, you know, appointed. You see, if you are in your church, hmm? if you are a member of a church, and you gather a group of people, and you start praying together, like someone did in, in the church I did, and teaching them, and even going out for mission, but you were never appointed to do it. You are actually destroying the church. Yeah. You're not building the church. Yeah. You're destroying it. Mm. I was going to teach you from Genesis 28. 18 marks of a great ministry.
look at him. <laughs> but in Genesis 28, so the Bible says that Isaac blessed Jacob and sent him. Yeah, you can't send yourself. You can't bless yourself. Yeah. And for me, I, I sent myself and blessed myself. And it didn't work until the person who should have blessed me and sent me, blessed me and sent me. Then it started working. Yeah. Look, if God allowed that to happen, eh? church would be equal to hell. Oh, yes. So, everyone... Now you're tempting me to preach that message. <clears throat> God is helping you. I can preach it. Because I thought you needed something else, but... I can't go there. So, if God allowed rebels to succeed, there would be no church. Yeah, there would be no church. So, God, in His own wisdom, has set a system where it is very difficult for rebels to succeed. Oh, it is very slow. So you, you have to be appointed and sent. Am I making sense? Now, when you are the one with appointing and sending authority, you also have to be aware of that. So you're not holding back people who should be appointed and sent. For me, in our church, anyone who comes and says that, I feel God is calling me. I don't. There is no debate. There is no go wait about it. There is only one person that I've ever told to wait. Because I trusted their judgment of my love for them. And later they came and said, Moana, you saved me. Because now they are doing so well. So well. By the time they thought they wanted to I was going to do my usual thing. But something once I tugged me and said, no, no, no. Love this man. Yeah. The man. Love him. Don't, don't. So I loved him. And told him to wait. And, and I told him, Take some time to think seriously about what you're doing. And if you're still convinced, come back. He never came back. He only came back later when he's doing so well. He said, have more. You saved my ministry. I said, okay. But there are a few others. That they come you know, like this. If, wherever we, if we are in a restaurant, that's where I pray for you. If we are in an office, that's where I prefer. The moment you say, me, I have a conviction to go. Yeah. Because I know the dangers of going unblessed and how frustrating it can be. I can't wish it on anyone. So for me, when someone feels like this is it, I'm like, hey. no, no. Let me do it now. If you want something formal later, you can come when there is oil. But right now, we are both here. And let's go. Yeah. Now, it's not as easy as it looks. Mm. Are you following? Eighteen marks of a great church or ministry. <laughs> now, I 
I used the picture of Jacob being blessed and that chapter where he's blessed and he goes on his way to Paran to teach about this because in the Old Testament, Israel is the picture of the church. You understand that? And Jacob is the personification of Israel. You know, he was done who was renamed Israel. So, before you see Israel as the nation, when you see Jacob, the person, you're seeing Israel, the nation, in a person. I'm trying to give those of you who are doctrinal purists the case for why I'm using Genesis 28 to teach about 18 marks of the great church. Because when you say, that has nothing to do with a, a church. No, it does. If you open your eyes. Most times we read without opening eyes. But let me finish the other earlier part. part. So I was saying, <laughs> a church. Prayer. Teaching. Soul winning. Let me even not use evangelism. Because people can say evangelism can be you get your guitar, sit by the roadside and you sing. And then say, we are doing evangelism. Yes, that can be a means of evangelism, but I want to be specific. It is soul winning. Yeah. yeah. So, you have to count and say, I won two souls, not I sang five songs. Because evangelism can be the activity, but soul winning is the what? Is the results. So, I think that any group of people under an appointed person who are praying, being taught, and winning souls qualifies to be called a church. Yeah. They don't have to have a building with tiles. It doesn't matter where they meet. And you know the way we are going to do this thing? I was talking to someone yesterday who always stretches my mind. And they were saying, you know, we need to do like 100,000 churches to just stem the tide. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yes. You see, all you need to do is get all your members and send them. And <laughs> And say, you are now all pastors in twos. Shoo, 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 shoo. Yeah. Whether you meet under a tree, what you don't need the keyboard, sitting room, whatever. Now go and do the three things pray, teach, win souls. If you send out 500 pairs of people, hmm? mm. okay, that's a thousand people. 500. Okay, let me reduce to, so that we can be accommodative. If you send out 100 pairs of people, that's 200 pairs. 200 people. Do you think that after three months you still have 200 people? Some will succeed, some will, will fail so badly they will come back home. But let's say of the oh, only half succeed, 50 pairs, 100 people, if they can each multiply by 10, you will go from the 200 people who used to sit there to watch you to 1,000 in three months. Now, I can guarantee you, see, this is the other guarantee I can give you. If you stay there, 200 of you in the same room, in three months, you cannot be a thousand. Yeah. If you grow, you'll go to 250 and you'll be winning awards. For such great growth. So it's my application. <laughs> it is what? Yeah, we must not fear multiplication. So, uh, Mrs. Uh, Auntie Yo, give me my triangle which I asked for. 
This is what I was going to teach, but now I've changed my mind. I could as well give you the 18 marks because the way a person is looking at me is like, I'm sad you know. Up in out. So, friendship, that's the, one, the word I'm using. I, I first read this in a book by a Catholic priest called uh, Divine Renovation, a guy called Father James Malone. It was given to me by Pastor Rosie. Alone lawyer. I saw her around. Oh, yes. And so, uh, Father James, Nay Vieira, I told you, don't put full words. They will confuse people. Just put friendship WG. So, yes. So, Father James calls, uses encounter, discipleship, apostleship. I'm going through these details before I go to the other stuff that your ears are itching to hear. Because you find that for many of us, our churches are not working so well because we miss out one of these three for the church. Or one of these three for yourself as the pastor. Because you can only reproduce who you are. If Pastor Ron and Pastor Anne here, if they had a black kid, <coughs> we would be wondering. Oh. <laughs> Am I making sense? Because you reproduce who you are. So if 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 you send out those one hundred pairs. If you send out the 100 couples, okay, two people, they are going to reproduce who they are. Yeah. You find that if they like certain things, almost everyone that they disciple will like those things. Yeah. You find that if they don't like to fast, all their people will not like to fast. You find that if they don't like to pray, somehow all their people don't like to pray. If you find that they are rebellious, you will send them, they are rebelling against you. You find that now the people that they are with will soon be rebelling against them. These are spiritual things. You see, can I tell you something about spiritual things? Yes. Even if you pretend about it, it is a spiritual thing. Yeah. Even if you pretend about it. Let's say you're sexually immoral. But you pretend to be moral. Before you know it, the people under you. Yeah, it's spiritual. That's why he told Timothy, watch your life and your doctrine. I said, for the sake of those who hear you. Watch your life and your doctrine. Not just your doctrine. You can teach nice things. You can sound very theologically correct. But your life will eventually come through. Yeah. If you're terrible with finances, just watch. Yeah. If you are always in debt, you just reproduce a nation of indebted people. Eesh. This thing is getting serious. Am I making sense? On the other hand, why am I giving only bad examples? <laughs> if you are a worshiper, you reproduce worshippers. Oh, yes. Okay, you get the point. So, encounter, discipleship, apostleship. And I changed Father Malone's thing by combining it with Mike Brin's thing. Is this what happens when you read multiple sources and you understand what you're reading? You start making sense of it all. 
and realizing that, by the way, it's the same thing. People are just using different words. So because I wanted everything to end with ship, so we have friendship, discipleship, apostleship. How do you develop friendship with God? That's the WG. Prayer. How do you go about discipleship? Teaching. How do you practice apostleship? Soul winning, because apostleship is about getting into new territory. And you can't get into new territory with a church if you can't get into new territory by winning souls there. Hey. Are you understanding? Welcome. Okay. Okay. Do you want it in Max or not? No, you don't look like you want. Okay, you sit down. I really wanted to highlight this, this triangle and sort of strengthen it in our hearts so that you know this is it at, di at different degrees, at different sizes, different scales, whether it's an individual, a church, a network, a movement, a group, it's all the same thing. Makes sense. But I hope you remember where we started. How can the guy who needs 18 years be outpacing us who need weeks? Something is not, something, yeah, something needs to change. <laughs> the people around this table. Do you feel like something needs to change? There's a way in which you are looking at me and saying, you are analyzing. Okay, from Genesis 28, verse, okay, point one, 18 marks of a great ministry or minister. You can go both ways, right? Because the ministry comes out of the minister. One, they value the blessing or they seek to be blessed. Genesis 28, verse 1 to 3. <clears throat> now, when we put up the scriptures, read together loudly so that <clears throat> I can hurry up. Let me even put up my clock. One, two, we go. Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him. And charged. We thought, I thought we agreed to you together. Oh, but the screens are not clear. Are the lights confusing the screens? One, two, we go. Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said to him, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Perdon Aram, to the house of Bethel, to your mother's father, and take yourself a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may be an assembly of peoples. So he says he called him and blessed him. Yeah, me the big mistake I made is to go. But God had mercy. You know, do you know the person that God loves the most in the whole world? Yeah, no. We start with me, then you point at yourself. <laughs> yeah. When I look at all the mistakes I've survived in ministry, it, uh, this one being like the biggest one, I'm like, man, I would be dead by now. Yeah, there will be no church. Because when you're young and foolish, full of zeal no wisdom you can think that your giftings can make a ministry think if I can do this I can teach, I can sing, I can do music I can mobilize people, I can raise money what are we waiting for? 
even though I decided not to teach this message, for whoever it is here, at whatever age you are, let me tell you this one for free. Never make this mistake. Yeah. Because if you survive it, it will be that God has decided to suspend one of his principles. It's a case of you jumped off the roof and somehow you didn't die. Yeah. Gravity didn't work on you. Why behold the storm with us? Am I telling you the truth? Oh yes. oh, yes, guys. Can you imagine a world where you see there's a reason why there are not okay, there's a reason why there are not too many large churches. Yeah, and this is one of the biggest reasons. Because a lot of people left their fathers or whatever you want to call them, maybe in your head you don't even see them as a father. You think about a bad man who was trying to control you and whatever. A lot of people left their fathers and started ministry unauthorized. And heaven has a system of authorization. Just like earth has a system of authorization, you get conceived and you're born. Can you imagine if babies just decided to make themselves? <laughs> like, where did this one come from? Now they don't look like. Hmm? And that's the point with their parents. That this is helping. Look, this might be your opportunity. You're a pastor of a church and you left badly, and you've been wondering why you never seem to run out of problems in your church. Go, a friend of mine, I was preaching like this, and they got the sense. They went and bought very many gifts, took a, a, a present to the man who should have sent them. Because when they left, the man told, just chase them. He was, <laughs> you know, apostle type, apostle, apostle type people. They bring problems where they are. So sometimes they are just never come back. He told him, never come back to, to this church. And said, do you mean like to lead or to attend? No, <laughs> nothing. Go. Yeah. Now that can't be the blessing. So... <laughs> So he went and started the church. Yeah, and this friend of mine, from what I know about him, he's a very good leader, very sacrificial, gives everything. But that church, hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, the, that church, it didn't matter what we fed it. Because he started following me and we did all the principles. Discipleship, mission, it didn't matter what we fed that church. It did. Multiplication, we, we planted churches. They were all like these little, little things. Oh. And then one day I was teaching about honor in mentorship and he understood it. He went. Yeah, where they chased him from. And the man blessed him. What? And now things seem to be looking up. Eh? When I look at this church, I can say, this church is now going somewhere. I mean, the church has grown. There are some people. Real people. Look, whether you look at me like that, I didn't read, write the, 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 the Bible. Yeah. You may even be here and you're thinking that I'm attacking you. I'm not attacking you. Yeah. This message, I already preached it in Pastor Evangel's church. And while I was preaching it, I thought, ah, this message is so good. I think pastors of thousands, I should prepare it properly. Because at that time, I was just preaching it from first principles. 
So I spent a good time Wednesday arranging it. Said, okay, pastor. So in case you think this is your message, maybe it is your message, but I don't know you. I don't, I don't know where you came from. I don't know whether you were sent or you sent yourself. Or you were sent away. Life happens. Hmm? Apostle type people. You're there, you're in the church, but you are disturbing, so they send you. They, they, not they send, they send you away. Never come back here. I never thought such a thing is possible in church. <laughs> but anyway, this guy also, you can understand why they sent him away. There, we have seats to my left if you're looking for nice seats here, here to my left. Yeah, because when he was in that church, he was leading prayer in another church. <laughs> And then he was, I think, on the guest experience team of another church. But in his church, he led the youth where they chased him. Can you imagine your youth pastor leads prayer in another church on Sunday morning? <laughs> and he's on a guest experience of another church. At some point, eh? Order has to come. <laughs> he was zealous for good works. He was addicted to the ministry, like the house of who? <laughs> the anointing was too much, it needed to be distributed. Some nangi. My friend, he went, he took gifts. The man of God welcomed him. He went to his home. They ate. He blessed him. And he's not very happy. Things look good. So, I have many more verses, but I will not go there. You know, God blessed Adam. Is that rain? God blessed Adam and said, uh -huh, Be fruitful, multiply. Fill the earth. He blessed Noah, chapter 9, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. This one, they are blessing him, become uh, an assembly of peoples. So the blessing is the agent of fruitfulness and multiplication, not hard work. So you may find that now you, you are into 40 day fasts. I have nothing against 40 day fasts. We need them. Trying to compensate for the blessing which you didn't get because you ran away. Why is this the first point? Pastor Shama, this first point is taking too long. Should I stay with it? I stay on it. Yeah, man, I'm telling you guys. I'm appealing to you. I'm beseeching you. I'm imploring you. Whenever you feel God is calling you away from where you are, never walk away. Go and seek to be blessed. Now, if they tell you, wait, wait. Yeah. You may not be as luck as I was. Where you didn't wait, but somehow it worked out. Me, the way that things worked out, I don't even want to tell you. <laughs> yeah. I passed on the car rope. I look back and I'm like, that was close. That's the first point. Have you understood it? Great ministers or ministries always seek the blessing. They value the blessing. Amen. Hmm. So we are using the picture of Jacob. 
as Israel as the church in him and is on his way. So the first thing is he was being sent. He was blessed and sent. Amen. Two. Ah, will we reach the 18 points? Two. They are fruitful. They multiply and become nations. Hmm? They are fruitful, they multiply, they become nations. Genesis 28, 3. We are all, all this is in Genesis 28. Oh, by the way, initially it will not make sense to you that this is about the church. But at some point in the middle, you will start seeing that it's about the church. That it's actually a prophetic. Genesis 28 is sort of a prophetic picture of a prevailing ministry. Verse 3, what does it say? May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may be an assembly of people. This is the blessing, which is also the vision. As his father is blessing him. You know, we didn't talk much about the blessing as we ought to. But remember that initially the guy even just stole the blessing. Yeah, they thought it was his brother Pumbe, it was him. Which goes to show how valuable the blessing is that even the man who went, who used fever to get it, God respected his desire and never took it away from him. Because he knew this guy values this thing. Let me give you a, a, a picture. The guy who remained home, who is Esau, inherited all of Isaac's wealth, which was not small. Genesis 26, 13 gives you a clue. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. This was Isaac. And Jacob left with a stick. Meaning that because the only two sons, everything that was left behind was for the son who stayed behind, Esau. Esau inherited all these flocks, herds, and servants. <laughs> Where are they today? Today, the children of Jacob, the Jews, control the world's economies. Where are the children of Esau who inherited material wealth? They are, the nation doesn't even exist. Edomites, they perished. So if you're chasing money, you're chasing the wrong thing. Over time, watch this, over time, spiritual things gain value and material things lose value over time. Yeah. One who inherited the wealth may have looked to be the better off one at that point because this guy only has a stick. Even when he needed to sleep, he used a, a stone for pillow. That's a, there are levels of poverty, but when you're using a stone for pillow, that's different. And yet... In the long run, the one who got the blessing far outpaced the one who got the wealth. So, if you haven't been blessed, look, do, do everything in the book to get blessed. I mean, this guy even lied, but he got blessed. I'm not saying go and lie. I mean, what I'm saying is, see just how far the book stretches us. How about you, righteous one? Without going into lying, what could you do if you're convinced God has called you? Am I making sense? Because also you could be thinking God has called you. Like there are some people I blessed, but. I'll, I'll end it there with three dots. 
Yeah. But there are some people are blessed. When they say, uh, 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 this is what God is saying, I say, let's pray. And from here, I pray for you the way you want. If you want to kneel, you kneel. If you want to stand, you stand. If you want both of us to lie down, we lie down. Okay. Not really, not really. If you want to be the one to lay hands on me, I kneel. <laughs> Strange things. No. But you see, what I'm, what I'm imploring you is whatever you do. Yeah. Go back there and say, hey, we were wrong. Forgive us. Have mercy on us. Yeah. For the sake of the future and all those that God has ordained you to reach. So you don't go around struggling with 70 people for years because you're too proud to go back and seek the blessing so that your 70 becomes 70,000. Why did I go back to point one? I don't know. Point two, they are fruitful, they apply, they become nation. So this is the vision. It says, may God Almighty make you fruitful and multiply you and that you may be an assembly of peoples. Do you remember I talked about Abraham? They are talking about the same thing here. They are talking about the same thing about you and I. So fruitfulness is addition. Hmm? You add. Then multiply and then exponential growth. That's assembly of peoples. When the curve goes like that. Whoosh. Am I making sense? Oh, by the way, and in this becoming an assembly of peoples, one of the things that can happen, it doesn't have to be with your brand on it. Yeah. Jacob didn't know many of the people who came out of him. By the fourth generation. But you see, that's a problem of natural systems. They are too slow. Okay. This topic is creating a lot of somberness in the room. Are there people here who left without being blessed? What's going on? It's the rain, eh? What did you serve at breakfast? So this is the vision. So great ministries. Now there are three things you do to achieve these three levels of fruitfulness, multiplication, and exponential growth or, or becoming an assembly of peoples. Should I tell it to you? The guys at the back don't want to hear this, this point. What a shock. Okay, there are only five of them. You can sit down. This is the triangle we were looking at earlier, but flipped. Evangelism is fruitfulness. How do you add yourself? You go uh, do evangelism. Multiplication is what? Discipleship. That's when the people that you have The people that you have discipled are able to disciple others. That's my application. Assembly, that's church planting. Or oh, apostleship. Church planting. That's a, a slightly different triangle. But don't mind it. Just go with what I'm telling you. So, evangelism discipleship. Let me show you some verses that may help you think through this. Acts 2 47. One, two, we go. Praising God with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. Have you seen added there? 
These were believers being added. Now go to Acts chapter 6 verse 1. Now in those days, uh -huh, the number of the disciples was was it adding? He says believers were added to the church daily, but disciples were multiplying. Because believers, you go, you do outreaches, crusades, what people come, you've added. You keep some, you lose some, depending on your follow-up systems. Discipleship is very intentional because you start to multiply. Okay. Acts 9.31. Mm -hmm. Are we there? Let's read. Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. What was being multiplied? Churches. Not just disciples. As, that's why it says that you may be an assembly of peoples people groups, nations and they call them nations an assembly of nations so this is the destiny of everyone who is blessed you start by adding because you, you're going to start with only a few people and then you start multiplying through the disciples that are around you hmm? And as you multiply, you quickly realize you can't be one church, one place. So you start going further and further and further to multiply. And that's how you become an assembly of peoples. Now let me demonstrate this to you. Let me have like six or seven people from here join me here. Come to the center so that you know. Can I have a seventh? You are not a seventh day Adventist. You are just a seventh. <laughs> so let's say you start here. You are going into my application. We all know the addition, how it works. Yeah? Door to door, invite, follow up, they come. Like that. That's addition. Or do I need to teach that one also? No, that, here in Uganda, we are really good at that one. So I want to interest you in multiplication. So this one, let me use very simple math. So I'm going to use a number that doesn't require you to use your calculator, 10. Okay? It's called a coefficient. So using a coefficient of 10. Pastor Bridget, my land friend. They are learned in other disciplines apart from this one. <laughs> she has a good neighbor. So using a coefficient of 10, if one pastor here multiplies into 10 disciples, yeah? These are how many now? 11. <laughs> Looks like we are strong with many names. <laughs> we love you too. <laughs> Dr. Kuro, I'll leave the rest of the coaching to you. <laughs> and each, if each of these go out and get 10 disciples, these are how many? 100. So these are 111. If each of these go and get 10 disciples, these are 1,111 disciples disciples in the church now I can tell you for free there are not so many churches where you go on Sunday and there are 1,000 people there whichever you decide divide it divide, okay, children's church youth good what what there are not many but the good news is that as you understand because some things, some of you have taught you many times, but you keep understanding in parts. But as you understand at a new level today, I want to prophesy that your church is going to be one of the churches where when people come, 
there are 1,000 real human beings there. Yeah. This is how it works. It's multiplication. You can sit down. Hey, the other people. Now, this is 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. Paul writing to Timothy, saying the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. In other words, it's not only Timothy. There is Silas, Demas. Today I found out another one. I found an Erastus. We rarely talk about Erastus. Erastus was one of Paul's disciples. And he says, commit this to faithful men. men. We like to add women. Who will teach others also. So you find that in just these first four, if you can split a little bit. In just these first four generations, the pastor being generation one, you really have a thousand people. How do you do that? Make sure these are zonal pastors have 10 zones. Now I'm teaching you the practicals. You see, you're going to do this thing and it will keep backfiring on you until you understand how it works. There is something called the span of care beyond which when you go, things stop working. The people who are discipling others, they don't feel cared for, they start hating you, the pastor. So make sure that you are multiplying at all levels, not just disciples. Because you may find that in your church you have 35 missional communities and all the missional community leaders report to you. You are already outstretched. You should have zones. So let's say these were your zonal pastors. These are your MC shepherds. So these ones are taking care of 10, 10 of each on average. And these ones have 10, 10 of each on average. Vala, 1,000 disciples in the church. And by the way, at this point, I haven't even yet brought in children and teenagers. So you can add 500 of those and you add 1,500. Makes sense? Now, of course, being us, human beings and all our issues, we wish that we would just also have these ones, also have 10 of these, so you have 10,000 at your church. I can tell you for free <laughs> that unless you have a certain, I don't know what it is called, the logistics 